To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Now guys, I, I don't know what it is, but it seems like there's something about Disney and abandoning their buildings and just leaving them uninhabited for years that go together very, very nicely. The People Mover at Disneyland, very, very sadly abandoned. Innoventions at Epcot, the Wonders of Life Pavilion at Epcot, there just so happens to be a lot at Epcot. Discovery Island, Cranium Command, there's so many things that Disney just leaves abandoned. But today we're going to be talking about something that Disney has left standing uninhabited outside of the parks like River Country. But today's long lost Disney relic differs in the fact that it was supposed to be an add-on to Disney's Pop Century Resort. You see, where the Pop Century covers the years of 1950 through 1990, this second area to the resort would have covered the 1900s through the 1940s. This, everyone, is the story of the never built, yet also built and abandoned, Disney's legendary years. The year is 1999. Disney has been having massive success with their existing hotels on Walt Disney World property. With the opening of Disney's All-Star Movies, All-Star Music, and All-Star Sports Resorts, Disney has been seeing lots of people coming in and staying on property, more so than ever before. Because of cheaper options existing for families who want to stay on property but might not have the amount of money they need to stay at, say, the Contemporary or the Grand Floridian. And that's where the value resorts came in, and they were a great deal for the amount of money that you were paying and in 1999, Disney decided to open another value resort to follow up the all-star chain. This one would be similar in layout and theming because, of course, it was a value resort, and all of them are pretty similar. The theme of this new hotel would be bringing you through the best of pop culture moments from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and the 90s. That way, the hotel would age better than, say, the contemporary, who tried to open with a sort of futuristic tone but became quickly outdated. But because the tagline for Pop Century would be Remember When, Disney decided decided that they would play into the nostalgia and the fun of remembering things from the older days. Like, uh, this. This is a... can't tell, it's a really big cell phone disguising a stairwell. That's basically what Pop Century is. And I won't lie, I kind of love it. Around the turn of the not Main Street USA century, Disney began construction on this fourth value resort. Alongside the 50s through the 90s on the Pop Century side, there would also be another side across the lake named Hourglass Lake. The hotel would be called The Legendary Years. This side of Pop Century would delve deeper into the past with 1900s themed buildings, 1910s, 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. The two areas would be connected by a bridge over Hourglass Lake called the Generation Gap. And if you think for one second that Michael Eisner himself didn't come up with the name for that bridge, you're kidding yourself. Although it was originally scheduled to open in 2001, the project was delayed into 2002. There is a very, very good chance that this was in response to 9-11 bringing about a massive reduction in tourism, especially to Walt Disney World. This reduction in tourism also caused a lot of different other things to happen around all of the Disney resorts, and I'd recommend watching videos on Beastly Kingdom, or even Westcott over in California to see what the effect of these attacks was. The failed Euro Disney project also probably didn't help a whole lot either. Right when guests were getting excited about Pop Century opening in 2002, right when they were about to make their reservations, Disney delayed it again until December of 2003, almost 2004. The side that is open today and opened in 2003 was called the Classic Years, and I'm just going to call it that to make it a little easier. When the hotel opened in 2000. 2003, people could only stay at the classic years side. Although people assumed that the legendary years would open at some point, but obviously today we knew that they were wrong. And at the time, Disney was still kind of doing construction over at the legendary years. The decade signage had gone up in front of the lobby, the parking lot for what would have been the hotel was now finished completely and was being used for overflow parking for the wide world of sports complex, and everybody staying at the classic years side could just look over the lake and see that they were building the actual room rooms for the legendary years. The two buildings housing the rooms had been completely constructed, and while not finished and painted and everything, they were still standing, and so that's good. I mean, it's a start, but then everything just kind of stopped. Construction on the legendary years was halted, and there was no word from Disney on when it would be completed, if at all. And although Pop Century was popular with the guests from the very beginning, critics didn't really agree. Many who visited the hotel thought the unfinished section was unprofessional and kind of off-putting 
according to guests. They also thought that the larger-than-life props like that cell phone I showed you earlier were garish and not keeping in the theming of classic Disney Resort hotels, and that's valid. But that's the charm and sometimes the positives and sometimes the negatives if you're staying at a value resort, depending on what you value in a hotel. But long story short, that's basically the way the resort stayed for almost the next 10 years. The overgrown, abandoned resort was plainly visible from the pop century, and you could get close. I believe the Generation Gap Bridge was open, although you couldn't cross it completely, but you could go on it, and get a very up-close and personal look at the legendary years, and there were even some people who did what Disney tells you not to do, and went behind the fence, and got some footage of the abandoned hotel in its prime? I'm not sure if that's the appropriate word choice, but here's some footage of the abandoned legendary years buildings. Because Pop Century was only half finished with half of the century, people began calling it the Pop Half Century, and they weren't wrong. They only had built half the century up until that point. And unfortunately, they would never have that other half of the century, because in 2010, almost 10 years after Pop Century opened, Disney announced the Art of Animation Resort. Disney said that this new value resort would be occupying the land where the Legendary Years was supposed to stand. The already completed check-in building for the Legendary Years would become the Animation Hall, the check-in building for the Art of Animation. And the buildings that were already standing that were supposed to be part of the 1940s section of the Legendary Years would be rethemed into the Little Mermaid section of the Art of Animation. And now now I want to play a little quick game with you guys, looking at an aerial view of the Little Mermaid section of the Art of Animation, no pun intended, I want you to take a look at these three structures and guess which ones were the already built hotel rooms for the legendary years. It's not really hard, the age and weathering on the two older buildings is clearly visible over that of the newer building. These days, obviously, Pop Century is considered a completed resort, even though the complete century is not featured. A remnant of the legendary years even existing in the first place is the use of the classic years terminology. Although without the other half of the resort, there's really no need to distinguish the existing half as the classic years because it implies that there's another half of the resort that is not the classic years and that's just not true. The check-in building for Pop Century even has a sign above it stating that it's called the Classic Hall, something that's a leftover relic of a bygone era where there was going to be a legendary hall, but it never happened. One more remnant of the legendary years is the fact that the Little Mermaid section has outdoor entrances to the rooms. Let me explain. When you look at the Value Resort's exteriors, you will see that you enter the room from the outside. You take stairwells outside up to your room and walk down a sort of very, very long balcony to your room. This is the case for the All-Star Resorts, for Pop Century, and also for only the Little Mermaid buildings at the Art of Animation. If you look at the Lion King cars or Finding Nemo areas, you will see that there are no outdoor entrances to the room, but that they are internal hallways instead. This of course is more in line with a classic hotel where you enter your room from a main indoor building, whereas value resorts are more in line with classic motels entering from the outside. And this is why people, not me, but people, say that the art of animation narrowly avoided being able to become a moderate resort as opposed to a value. But there are value resorts where you enter your room from the outside, so I don't think that argument really holds any water. I just think it's interesting that at that point in time, Disney didn't really care about leaving things abandoned even if they were in full view of guests coming to stay at the resort. At least with Discovery Island or River Country, they could turn off the lights and the music and people just wouldn't know it was there. Imagine going on vacation to Walt Disney World, you finally get to go, and you're staying at the Pop Century Resort, and every morning you wake up and you get to stare at some abandoned, overgrowing hotel rooms right across the lake. I mean, I totally love that. I think it'd be super interesting, but I acknowledge not everyone loves that kind of thing. So whether you're staying at the Pop Century Resort or the Art of Animation, and just know that both buildings carry the same history and were once part of the same resort. The bridge connecting the two resorts is still even called the Generation Gap Bridge. They didn't change the name. So wherever you look at the art of animation or pop century, the legendary years are still with us in some way. Just not in the way of old, decrepit buildings, which I appreciate very much. The Galaxy's Edge saga is over. Everyone, what did you think about my first video back to just talking about General Disney? I missed it. I know a lot of other people have talked about the legendary years in the past, but I really just enjoy talking about abandoned Disney things that never really came to fruition and that there are remnants of around the parks 
or the hotels, and the Legendary Years was a perfect example of this. Why even have a building called the Classic Hall if there's no Legendary Hall? You know what I'm saying? Just don't call it anything. Everybody, if you wish to support me, you can go to my Patreon over there. You can make different levels of pledges, and depending on what kind of pledge you make, I will make different things and tiers and rewards available to you, even including a VIP tour around Disneyland led by me. Should probably talk about that at the beginning of the video before everyone clicks away, but hey, if you stick around till the end, there's a little secret for you. I do have merchandise and t-shirts available at teespring.com. The link also will be in the description down below, and if you just want to talk about the channel or discuss videos, I have a subreddit and a discord, and both are fairly active. I pop in from time to time. I don't usually say anything, but I look at these subreddits a lot. So if you want to go see what's going on with my channel and see other people talk about it so you can discuss things, go over to those links. And everybody, that's really all I have to, to talk about. I'm going to Walt Disney World next week, so I will be there in town, probably make a few videos about it. I'm staying at Port Orleans French Quarter. Isn't that awesome? So I'm probably going to make a vlog about that because I love New Orleans. New Orleans Square is my favorite land at Disneyland. I'm droning on at this point. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.